Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you don't know the same by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. First and foremost, you know how I like to do if you've been listening. Shout out the team, Buffalo Fanatics. We're going to continue to give you as much content as humanly possible. Now, I had a pretty damn good Saturday night. I had one too many drinks, and because I had one too many drinks, I wasn't able to charge my phone. I wake up around noon, Sunday afternoon, because I, like I said, I had a long Saturday night, Sunday morning. <laughs> so I woke up around noon, Sunday afternoon, I cut my phone on, and I cut my phone on to a bunch of text messages and a bunch of phone calls, voicemails, with Pure Jet fans laughing at me. I'm like, what the hell is so funny? Why are all these Jet fans laughing at me? And then I I went on our page and seen LaShawn McCoy has been cut from the Buffalo Bills. And me personally, when I when I saw the news, I was distraught. I was like, why? How? There's no possible way you can sell the fans that the Buffalo Bills are better this year without Shady McCoy. It's not like we're replacing him. It's not like the money matters. I know we saved $6 million towards the cap, but he was coming off the books anyway. So it was hard for me to digest the fact that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott came up with the situation or came to the conclusion to cut LaShawn McCoy and still try to sell our fan base that we are better without him this year. Uh, so I, I understood now why all these New York Jet fans were sending me these voicemails and these text messages laughing at me. I, I get it. I understand it. Uh, then I took a step back and I have to realize, as great as LaShawn McCoy is or was, when you look at his production, when you look at his actual production, the numbers that he put up for our Buffalo Bills and his tenure with the organization, it, it was about a, a 1,100-yard seasons, was good seasons for LaShawn McCoy. Now, granted, there was, those were productive seasons, but those seasons, those numbers, those statistics are indeed replaceable. Now, granted, do we lose um, some dynamic on offense? Possibly, yes. Uh, do we lose some wow factors? Because Shady McCoy has have them plays where he where he shows his shiftiness and his juke capabilities where it's like, wow, that was an amazing play. Do we lose that? Yes. But the actual production, the, astro, the actual statistics that he has or that he had is in fact replaceable. So when I thought about that, I was like, okay, I'm not as upset about the situation. Don't get me wrong. I still think uh, today with Shady McCoy, we would be better this year without Shady McCoy. Shady McCoy was on his last year on his contract. I knew that we definitely probably wasn't going to sign him next year. But that's next offseason where we had a whole offseason to bring in another capable back that's capable of putting up the production that Shady McCoy put up with our Buffalo Bills. Nevertheless, he is no longer with our organization. And I have to salute and appreciate and say thank you, LaShawn McCoy, to what you brought to what you brought to our organization. You was you was with us when we broke the drought. I know that he wasn't happy when he first got the news that he was traded from the from the uh, Philadelphia Eagles to the Buffalo Bills. I know he wasn't ecstatic about the situation, but he's grown to to love the city, love the fans, and you've seen it in his heartfelt message that he put out there via social media that he really appreciate the Buffalo Bills organization and the Buffalo Bills fan base. So myself, I, I appreciate and I have to thank Shady McCoy. He was always one of my favorite players ever since college days in Pittsburgh. If you had a, any eye for talent, if you had any any eye for, for knowing if a person can develop and progress into a good NFL prospect, you knew LaShawn McCoy would be a damn good NFL player. Uh, 
take it a step further. I possibly didn't know he would be a Hall of Famer, but he does have a Hall of Fame resume. He was one of my favorite players before the Buffalo Bills. He was definitely one of my favorite players, probably my favorite player with his time with the Buffalo Bills organization. And he's definitely one of my favorite players even after he's gone away from the Buffalo Bills uh, organization and transitioning to his new team, his new home, the Kansas City Chiefs. I always felt that he can be productive in the right situation. I know he had his 10,000, his 10K chase, and now he has another milestone with his 12K chase. And I wasn't sure, we wasn't sure if uh, LaShawn McCoy can reach that 12K milestone. It all depended on... On the situation. If he got himself into a good situation. It could definitely be possible. I feel that not only he got himself into a good situation with the Kansas City Chiefs. He got himself in a great situation with the Kansas City Chiefs. Our Buffalo Bills organization. I love my team. But it was easier for opposing defenses and defensive coordinators to really dissect our offense. We'll see what happens with our offense this year, but during LaShawn McCoy's tenure, uh, defenses can keen in on Shady McCoy. He was the most explosive, the most well-known player that we had on the offensive side of the ball, and you had to key in on him. If you could stop Shady McCoy, it's a good chance that you can stop the rest of our Buffalo Bills offense. Now, going over to the Kansas City Chiefs, where you have a guy like NFL MVP only in his third year in the season and getting better, who's ascending. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is a guy that's ascending, and he was an NFL MVP last year that threw 50 TDs. Now, I know a lot of people would say, hey, the Buffalo Bills traded out that 10 spot when they could have got Patrick Mahomes. That is true. That is absolutely correct. But at the same token, we have a defensive-minded coach. We, have, we don't have an Andy Reid over here. I believe a lot of Patrick Mahomes' success is predicated off of Andy Reid. So I just, if, if anybody's going to bring that up in the comments, I, I just want to put that out there that Andy Reid is an offensive guru. He's an offensive, he's a, he's a quarterback guru and he's an offensive guru. And that is the main reason why Patrick Mahomes can be Patrick Mahomes today. Uh, his physical talents, of course, is all on him, but him having that type of coach in his corner is a great benefit for Patrick Mahomes. Nevertheless, the Kansas City Chiefs have uh, one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the game today. They have great players on the outside, excuse me, with, with uh, Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey, and then they picked up the explosive wide receiver in the draft because they didn't know the status of Tyreek Hill, and now you have all these weapons around a Shady McCoy where defenses cannot key in on him alone. Shady McCoy is not even the focal point of that Kansas City offense, and because of that, he can be a very, very productive player for not only this year, depending on how this year goes, if they, he re-signs with Kansas City, he can definitely uh, make his 12K chase possible. So salute Shady McCoy and what he was able to do with our organization and salute him in his future in terms of how much yards he can get. I hope he gets 12K and I wish him all the best, except if he plays us. Moving on. It's that time of the year, week one of the NFL season. We don't have to wonder about the dog days of summer and what we're going to watch on TV anymore because TV is just not the same when the NFL and NCAA, NCAA football is not on. The time has come. Week one, Buffalo Bills, New York Jets. Let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think we're going to have it easy against the Jets? Do you expect us to win against the Jets? Do you expect us to lose against the Jets? How concerned are you with the New York Jets? And I'm going to start by saying I'm pretty concerned. I'm pretty concerned. I 
at the end of the day, I do feel that we should come we should come on top and get this victory, but it's definitely not going to be easy. They have a quarterback in Sam Darnold who a lot of people think Sam Darnold was actually the best quarterback coming out the draft. Uh, Mike McCagan, the former New York Jets GM, he wasn't a great GM. We see, we see, we see why they cut him. They got rid of Jakai Polite, Jakai Polite, uh, third round pick, 68 overall. Uh, that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> that really doesn't happen. You you try to keep your third round picks. Your third round picks is at worst supposed to be, if not a starter, a rotational uh, rotational piece. So I understand why the New York Jets opted to get rid of uh, Mike McCagan. But if he didn't do anything else, the greatest thing that Mike McCagan did in his tenure with the New York Jets was leapfrog the Buffalo Bills, move into that three spot so they was able to acquire and draft a Sam Donald. Sam Donald looks like he's progressing very well. We don't hear the same reports about Sam Donald that we do with Josh Allen. We get a when I, every time I read the reports about a Sam Donald, we talk we hear about how much he's progressed, uh, how much how accurate he is. We seen the back shoulder throws. We see in the preseason that he just marched up the field in a couple plays in back to back games and lead his team to touchdowns. So Sam Donald is definitely a progressing quarterback that we have to be concerned about. You match him up with. And Adam Gase, we know Adam Gase well because he was in the AFC East with the Miami Dolphins. But Ryan Tannehill is not Sam Donald. So when you pair, pair up an Adam Gase, who probably who have his best quarterback since of Peyton Manning, when you pair those two up and you look at the rest of their personnel, the rest of the, the players that they got on the offense, they, they don't have the, the necessary depth. But the beginning of the season, where everybody's healthy, the New York Jets are, are top heavy. And their top of the roster is, is very, very good. Now, when you have uh, Le'Veon Bell in the backfield, you have uh, Robbie Anderson on one side, on the outside. You have Quincy and Nuno on the other side. And then you have Jameson Crowder in the slot. We know that from watching Adam Gase, they run a lot of 11 personnel. Uh, shout out, shout out my boy Kevin Gerard, who's a Miami Dolphin fan, who's been giving us over with the Buffalo, Buffalo Fanatics a lot of tidbits and a lot of things to look out for in an Adam Gase offense. They run a lot of 11 personnel and, and they have a very good nucleus over there with Sam Donald, Le'Veon Bell, Quincy Anunua, Robbie Anderson, and Jamison Crowder. Us as a defense, we have to try to get pressure on Sam Donald. I don't think we got enough pressure on Sam Donald last last year when we lost 27-23 and he was able to make the necessary plays to propel the Jets over our Buffalo Bills last season. And this season, week one, we're coming into MetLife Stadium. I heard they ordering a bunch of towels for their fans. Their fans are going to be rocking. They're going to be locked and loaded. They're going to be ready to go. So we have to, as a defense... If we want to uh, uh, win this game as a defense, we're going to have to put pressure on Sam Donald. We, he's a great improviser. He's not an athletic specimen, probably like a Josh Allen. He's not going to take off and run as much if he don't have to like a Josh Allen, but he can improvise. He can uh, escape the pocket. He has that pocket presence, that pocket awareness to escape the pocket, roll out, and do damage with his feet and his arm at arms uh his arm as well. So if we can collapse the pocket, get some pressure and get a pass rush that we didn't have last year, we can we can do some things on the defensive side of the ball and we can stop or try to contain Sam Donald as humanly possible. And I think if we add that pressure, if Ed Oliver can help us add that pressure and Jerry Hughes and Trent Murphy is healthy enough, I think that we definitely can do that. We have some players on the defensive side of the ball that I think is ascending. And I'll be because of that, I think that 
we can do some things and, and come out and get this victory. Chadavious White is going to have to have a better game than he had last year against the New York Jets. Robbie Anderson kind of tore him up that second game, and we have to do a better job staying in the hip pocket of these New York Jets receivers. Uh, Adam Gase loved to run a lot of short passes, a lot of bubble screens. There's a reason why Jarvis Landry, before he got traded to the Cleveland Browns, had over 100 catches but did not have 1,000 yards receiving. He loves the short passing game. He loves to get the ball to his best player and let his best player go to work. Tackling, fundamental tackling is going to be very key in this game. We're going to have to be able to gang tackle. We're going to have to be able to tackle one-on-one. We cannot miss tackles. We cannot get sloppy on the defensive side of the ball. If we can tackle, if we can gang tackle and swarm around the ball, I think we will be okay. Moving to the opposite end of the spectrum, they have a defensive coordinator in Greg Williams. While I don't think Greg Williams is the Greg Williams from the New Orleans Saints, the bounty gate, I don't think he's the bounty gate Greg Williams. I think that uh, the NFL, the offenses evolved a lot in time has passed where he's not the, as elite as he was possibly looked at uh, years and years ago. He is still a very good defensive coordinator, and he is, and he can be especially good when you're facing uh, second year quarterbacks. And Josh Allen is a second year quarterback, and because of that, I'm a little concerned. I'm going to break down why even further. Greg Williams, see the Carolina Panthers game in that preseason game when Josh Allen was 9 for 11, 102 yards. The Carolina Panthers was run a, was running a basic four-man rush where uh, Josh Allen could sit back and, and read the defense and deliver his throws. Greg Williams is going to bring the house. Greg Williams is going to disguise blitzes. Greg Williams is going to uh, disguise his defenses to try to confuse Josh Allen. And we all know that Josh Allen sometimes, when he blitzed, he doesn't keep his eyes down the field and he might tend to run instead of keeping his eyes down the field and looking for the open man. It's going to be very important for Mitch Morse, Josh Allen, to get on the same page and read the defense's pre-snap. Pre-snap recognition is going to be vital in this game. Uh, Greg Williams is going to run D-line stunts. He's going to run linebacker blitzes. You're going to see Jamal Adams all over the field as a rover. He's going to be blitzing. He's going to be in the backfield. He's going to be in coverage. Jamal Jamal Adams, excuse me, their, uh, their uh, all-pro safety is going to be all over the field. And it's going to be imperative that Josh Allen recognizes where he is each and every play. If Josh Allen can recognize the defense and we can protect protect. Him, Josh Allen, for three, four, five seconds. I know that sounds like a long time, but if we can protect him for at least three seconds or so, we can definitely do some things on offense. If Josh Allen is is not reading defenses, if he didn't progress in the offseason reading defenses and recognizing plays and recognizing things going on pre-snap and with that crowd in MetLife going crazy, it could be a long day for Josh Allen. So we're going to hope, I'm going to hope that Josh Allen can do the necessary things pre-snap to recognize exactly what Greg Williams and that defense is going to try to do uh, on that side of the ball. The New York Jets have a very, very good defensive line with Quinnen and Lennon Williams, uh, with Henry Anderson, with Steve McClendon. They have a very good defensive line. They have an excellent safety in Jamal Adams. They have a pretty damn good safety when healthy in Marcus May. And uh, being that they lack that cornerback depth, I think that's the weakest link with the New York Jets. If we can get to their cornerbacks and expose their cornerbacks, we, we can definitely be successful. But because of that, because the New York Jets have a weak link at the cornerback position, Greg Williams is going to do everything he can possibly do to disguise that 
and make sure that his cornerbacks don't get left on an island. So we're definitely going to see the chess match between Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills offense, and Greg Williams' defense. We're definitely going to see a chess match with Sam Donald and the New York Jets offense and the Buffalo Bills defense. Once again, the Jets running that 11 personnel, running them three wide receiver sets. It also can create lanes for Le'Veon Bell, who is one of the best running backs in the league today, even if he missed the past 18 months. So we're going to see what happens. I'm very excited about this game, week one. I'm actually going to the game. If anybody's going to the game, you're going to see me in my Buffalo Fanatics uh, shirt. I'm probably going to be with my boy, my brother, who's a Jets fan. He's going to be in his Robbie Anderson jersey. If you see a, a, a black guy <laughs> in a Buffalo Fanatics shirt, it might be myself, A. Rich, Akeem Richards. Please, if you have tickets to the game, come support the Bills, man. We're going to MetLife, and we're going to try to pull off, in my opinion, this upset. Do I think we are we have a chance to win? I do think we have a chance to win this game. I do think we can win this game because I do think Josh Allen is, has progressed and taken the necessary steps in the offseason to make a big leap from week one, from year one to year two. And overall... Even though the Jets are top-heavy, even though they may have some quote-unquote stars that we probably don't have in the Le'Veon Bell or C.J. Mosley, I believe that we are a more complete team. And we have a lot more depth and we can throw a lot more waves and rotation than the New York Jets can and be successful. And because of that, I believe our team, the Buffalo Bills, will be the victorious winners. A. Rich, Akeem Richens, you're listening to The Blueprint. I hope you enjoy. Till next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.